What's going on my friends? I am Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U. Today is going to be part two of a video. If you missed uh, the last one, I am doing a backyard edition. Um, this is going to be several videos that we do throughout the entire project. Um, so this is day two. Today, uh, the goal is to try to get the ceiling done. I wanna get off ladders. Um, always when I do rough-ins, my first goal is like, let's get all the ceiling done, let's get the ceiling cans done, all the lights, fans, everything, let's start wiring up there, let's get everything up off the ladders, uh, get all of that done, so that the rest of the project, we're just coasting on the ground, rather than like going from groundwork to ceiling, then back down to ground and ceiling, and then, or leaving the ceiling work to be the very last thing, that always kind of sucks too. So I always try to get the hottest stuff, the hot stuff up high. Um, this is all off 12 foot ceilings too, so I'm working on eight foot ladders, just up and down, up and down throughout the day. So that was my goal, just to get all that done and then to start wiring everything. So what I got uh, when I arrived, I brought a bunch of four inch cans with me. Um, they make recessed cans in three inch, four inch, five inch, six inch. Um, I just chose because this is such a small place, the rooms are gonna be really small. Um, I chose four inch for everything. Four inch actually still puts out a lot of light depending on what kind of LED trims that you use, how many lumens uh, of light are being put out of each one. But I knew that the trims that we were getting were gonna be adjustable so that we would have a little bit of uh, leeway on whatever they wanted. Fun fact, uh, a lot of people don't even use recessed cans anymore. So um, there's these new things called wafers and they help with a lot of problems. Recessed cans have to be insulation contact rated if you're running things that are in IC rated environments. There's a certain amount of heat if you're using incandescent uh, or halogen lighting um, that you need to stay away from the contact of insulation. But these new wafers are all LED and a lot of the space limitations too to like older cans, you'd have to put a whole housing in and slam this housing up and there might be decking above. So you gotta get shallow cans. You just have these cans that you gotta spend all this time nailing up and wiring. So these wafers, you can just, they're slim, you know, like they'll actually fit underneath a stud. So if you're cutting a hole out and you're like, oh crap, there's a stud right there. A lot of these skinny slimline wafers will fit even though there's a stud there. So like there's all kinds of reasons why people would love to use wafers now instead of using recessed cans. And I kind of agree with that method. A lot of the wafers have adjustable color profiles. So you can go from like 2,700 Kelvin all the way up to like five or 6,000 uh, Kelvin. And it just seems like it's a better method. You can take the power supply box that comes with it and kind of shove it off to the side, or you can mount it somewhere. Um, you're just not limited to using the actual cans. Now, if I'm in a new construction environment, I'm probably not gonna make that same call. If I've got a job that's got 150 cans throughout the house, I'm not gonna use 150 wafers and then just leave legs up in the attic somewhere and have to figure all that crap out on trim out. I want everything wired and done so when I come to do my trim out or finish out or top out or whatever you call it um, and start putting my can trims in, that's all I wanna have to do. I don't wanna have to continue wiring when I'm at the final tail end of what should be a smooth operating job um, just putting in devices. So that's just my method. When I'm in new construction, I still use recessed cans. Um, nail on can specifically, but if I'm in a remodel or something like that, or I'm just adding, um, you know, little bits of wiring here and there, then yeah, absolutely. I use wafers all day, every day. All right. So the job that we're on right now, this layout is a little hard just because like they gave me a plan, but the framing doesn't match the plan and they have some walls that aren't built yet because they don't really know what they're going to use the space for kind of thing. So I already know like, oh, this is crappy. It's okay, I'm charging time and material. So I spent all of this time, got the layout together, based everything off what the customer said, met with the customer beforehand, made sure absolutely this is how they want me to do it, regardless what they decide. Can <laughs> I get all of the ceiling done? There's four, eight, 12, there's 12 cans that I had to put up, fan boxes, had to get all of that adjusted to 12 foot ceiling. So I'm like up and down off of tall ladders. Um, and then just trying to figure out where these walls are going to go based off of what they told me, everything was spaced a certain way. Well, they changed it. So I had spent hours getting this whole ceiling laid out, marked out, everything nailed up, everything you know measured off of every wall the same way, off each can the same way, the fans centered, all of this stuff in the ceiling. It took me a couple hours to do. 
And then he comes out and he's like, oh crap, that wall's not gonna go there anymore. We decided we're gonna move that now. And I'm like, bruh, that changes everything. Like almost everything in the ceiling that I did was based off this center wall being right there. Now that they're telling me it's over, it's like gonna be right on some cans. And then there's this huge gap on the other side now because the whole wall shifted. So have to redo all of that. But again, time and material job, I'm okay with it. As much as you wanna pay me time to sit there and redo work for you, I'm cool with it because I'm getting paid the whole way. Now, the other cool thing is we didn't have any of the, the, the wire in, so like that would have been even more of a pain in the butt. It was just the cans that we had to move and the fan boxes and everything. Um, if the wire would have been in, then we probably would have had to scrap a whole bunch of wire or like just undo a bunch of MC and, and that would have been such a pain in the butt. That would have probably pissed me off. All right, so for today's code time, let's talk about luminaires. Um, there's a single light fixture that I put a light box in one of the closets. What they're saying is going to be a closet. They still don't really know what they're doing. Might be a pantry, might be a closet, who knows. But I wanted to make sure that when I wired it, that I was wiring it as a closet per code. So what does it say in luminaires if we open up 410 about putting lighting in closets? There's some things that have changed in the last few years. Um, if we go to 410.16, we have luminaire types permitted, and then there's luminaire types not permitted. So in closets, only luminaires of the following types shall be permitted in closed closets. Surface mounted or recessed incandescent or LED luminaires with completely enclosed light sources. That's the key. Number two, surface mount or recessed fluorescent luminaires. Surface mount fluorescent or LED luminaire identified as suitable for installation within the clothes closet storage space. So that's pretty much, that like limits everything that we're gonna do in there. You no longer can you have a keyless fixture with an incandescent light or a halogen light or something like that inside of the closet. If it is incandescent, it can be surface mount or recessed but it has to be a completely enclosed light source, meaning that there's no way that clothing is going to come in contact with this super hot light bulb. Uh, B, luminaires not permitted. Incandescent luminaires with open or partially enclosed lamps and pendant luminaires or lamp holders shall not be permitted. So a lot of these fancy ass pendants where people are putting incandescent bulbs and they're hanging down and they're catching everything in the closet on fire. Um, there's places around here where they want only LED. They don't give a shit. They wipe all of the stuff away and say LED only in closets. Now, the location is another thing to keep in mind. The minimum clearance between luminaires installed in closed closets and the nearest point of closed closet storage space shall be as follows. 12 inches for surface mounted incandescent or LED luminaires with a completely enclosed light source installed on the wall above the door or on the ceiling. Number two, six inches for surface mounted fluorescent luminaires installed on the wall above the door or in the ceiling, same thing. Um, six inches for recessed incandescent or LED luminaires with a completely enclosed light source installed in the wall or the ceiling. Six inches for recessed fluorescent luminaires installed in the wall or the ceiling. And then surface mounted fluorescent or LED luminaires shall be permitted to be installed within the closed closet storage space where identified for this use. Thought that was interesting. Now back to the show. All right, so now that I've gone around and redone all of the can layout, all of the fan layouts, lighting, all of it is redone. I had the customer come out, approved everything. We said we're all good to go. So I was like, all right, now I'm just going to start wiring. I'm gonna get ground level um, and start putting a bunch of my plug circuits in and I was gonna save all of the wiring for the recess cans for the next day. Um, so I started uh, rolling out all of my MC. I always uh, take MC from the inside when I'm working with steel studs. There's a specific way that MC is meant to be pulled through steel studs. So I always make sure that I match the kind of like arrow shape of the MC going through the correct uh, way that it is punched out inside of that steel stud. Now, if this is your first time watching and you're like, why are you even using MC in a, in a house, in a little addition? Um, right now, well, this was about six months ago that I did this job, but uh, the prices of Romex were so high, it was like 160 to 180 dollars, just kind of depending on where you were finding it, per roll of 12.2. 
for 250 feet. MC was $104 a roll. I'm like, okay, well, that's an easy choice. Plus the entire building was done in steel because wood was so expensive. It was like three times more for all wood studs. So this guy even said like, I'm just gonna frame this whole thing out of steel because I can get it at a third of the cost that I can get any kind of wood right now. And just the back ordering of it and everything. So he actually had steel readily available. So uh, I just went with the cheapest of the more expensive things that I could do, MC just made sense. Now, as I'm wiring a bunch of these plugs, you're gonna notice that I put all of these big slack loops in. The undecided nature of this, uh, there's a lot of like things that they might change, could change, and if I, I would have rather taken the time to uh, waste a little bit of material and make sure that I've got slack at a lot of the different locations in case they move something. Um, in this job, I, normally I wouldn't do that for you know every plug in a garage, but I just figured, you know, he said he wanted all these plugs down low. He kept saying over and over, he's not putting any countertops anywhere any workbenches anywhere inside of this garage. But then he also mentioned that he was doing like a lift for, uh, you know, being able to work on cars and stuff. And I'm like, bro, you're gonna want, I don't know. So I just put some extra just in case he needs me to come and take those boxes and raise them up and put some plugs up high. Again, argued over and over with him that he said he's not gonna need them, but I just would rather safeguard it and provide a little extra, it's not hurting anything. The next thing that I did, he wanted to put two receptacles up in the ceiling for his lighting. Rather than putting lighting in the garage and putting cans just like I'd done everywhere else, he wanted to do some kind of fancy LED strip. So I just put some uh, plugs up in the ceiling. Again, left a little bit of slack just in case we want to move them any other kind of direction. Uh, but that's what those boxes are up in the ceiling. <laughs> You'll notice when I'm uh, doing everything with MC that I'm wearing gloves. So, you know from past videos, I talk about this a lot, just uh, wearing gloves. I have tons of different kinds of gloves that I use for every different kind of environment. Um, and I think it's really good instead of getting your hands like filthy, you're working with MC, there's like oily residue all over the outside of, of the sheathing of MC. But rather than getting your hands all filthy and it getting all over you and getting all over everything else that you touch, um, it's just I wear gloves to make sure that I don't get filthy. And then when I take them off, then I, you know, I go into a person's house to use their restroom or whatever, and I'm not just filthy going into their house. But the other thing is MC, it's sharp. There's a lot of like cutting metal sharp edges, plus you're working in steel studs. So everything that's punched out is really hard. I have filleted my hands open time and time again throughout the years doing this with different kinds of metal in different environments. So I just wear gloves from now on. There's no reason not to. I think anytime you're working around anything sharp, just, just take care of your hands. So uh, after that, I just cleaned up, made a plan for the next day to come back with a refreshed mind not irritated about having to redo all of my work. But that is all I have for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure that you like, make sure that you hit subscribe, uh, hit the little notification bell, let you know every time we have a new episode. Um, if you didn't catch part one of this, click here, watch part one. Uh, it's pretty rad, but it gives you like more of what we were just doing, but like the last part of it. Uh, there's gonna be a part three coming out soon. Also make sure that you join the Discord server. That is where all of the action is. There's like 2000 electricians in there right now. Um, more of y'all keep joining, but there's bunches of like code talks that we do and talks about different tools and what licensing re regulations are for certain areas. Um, sometimes I'll get in there and do code talks. We'll do like, uh, you know, rooms where we'll do voice chats and there's a stage and we can get up and raise hands and ask questions and stuff like that. But there's just tons of stuff in Discord. If you're not in Discord, you're like seriously not a good electrician. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's probably not true. Join our Discord. There's a link in the description below. Also, if you want to just see like what I do throughout the day, um, I'm constantly posting all over Instagram. So you should follow me on Instagram for sure if you don't, um, because it's just like little bits of all kinds of extra stuff, real story stuff like that. Uh, follow me on all the other socials that don't matter. <laughs> Join the channel. Uh, you get my phone number. If you want to like text me some of your crazy questions, somebody sent me a picture today of like, hey, how do I run this low voltage stuff across this house? And he like drew all over the picture. And I'm like, bro, just do it like this. And so kind of cool little stuff throughout the day. Uh, you can text me any kind of questions or anything like that, that you have. Uh, that's all I got. Love you crazy people. See you in the next one. Best camp music and video.